طيب اوكي ويلكم تو ذس ويبينار اباوت ماسترنج ذا موست كومن داكس فانكشنز يوزنج اكسل في الباور كويري بعض النقاط اللي بنتكلم عليها نحن سم كي بوينتس خلينا نتكلم عليهم اول شيء نتكلم على بشكل عامي هو اي ام حابب انا اتروديوس هو اي ام ماي نيم از محمد مفيد ام ا سيرتيفايد مايكروسوفت ترينر ات اكسبرت ليفل ات مايكروسوفت اوفيس اند اذر ابلكيشنز لايك باور بي اي Microsoft Projects و كمان other application related for data analytics اسمي محمد مفيد This webinar طبعا uh, it's gonna be recorded ف- I will give you all this information about that انه the webinar can be rewatched على our website www.viftraining.com so you can rewatch it and كمان you will be receiving a link where you can Again, directly go straight to the page where you can see this webinar. طبعا حيكون عندنا نحن QA بنخليها نحن يعني every 10 minutes اذا بتكتبوا لي في ال QA your question انا بجاوب عليه وحيكون في اخر webinar one minute survey. هلا for any technical issues uh, please send to me on the chat وحكيت رح تكون عندكم e certificate will be issued انكم attended this webinar by the end of Of this webinar, you will receive that email. But, and for other webinars, if you want to check webinars or any other courses, again, you can check it on our website, which is www.viftraining.com. But, so let's start with the DAX function. And what is DAX? What does DAX mean? DAX means data analysis expressions. Hala, the difference between DAX and the other Excel functions that in the DAX is used with the Power Query and Power Pivot, also with the Power BI. They are powerful functions used, especially when we have relationship data and data model. We'll explain more when I'm a demonstration. We'll see what do I mean by DAX. Hello. One of the things in the DAX is good with is to create something called additional columns to your data or to create measures what's the what are the columns or calculated columns and what are the measures using DAX and also I'll show an example of creating bad example of columns and good example of columns and to create good measures but to just identify what are the differences Calculated columns are columns that you can add it additionally على data تبعتنا. ف in this case we will add this the columns بس ما بي they don't get stored in the actual data. بعدين second thing they don't have the A1 style reference. Uh, I will explain this more in details لما تشوفوا demonstration. وبعدين calculated columns بحسبوا at the row level and I will explain also this. And their stores, and the value they stores within the table, but they don't live in the actual table. And they are good, good to use with an attribute. So, يعني مثلاً, if I wanted to do a column that, for show me the category of the expenses. If the expenses is less than 10,000, that they are low. Between 10,000 and 20,000, they are medium. Above that, high. Something like that to create a new category. If the membership, uh, if the person, مثلا, he is like more than 10 years experience, we call him, for example, expert, and so on. They are not good with using aggregations. They sum, average, max, and min, and so on. good examples. And usually these columns, when they are created, when we pivot table, when you create these columns, the values of these columns, we the row fields, the filter fields, we the column fields are not in the value fields. By the measure, the measure is a placeholder for a value. For example, is I have a table that has an expenses over months and over departments or so on, you can create a measure that's called total expenses. For example, we call like this, or total sales. For again, it's a not A1 style referencing cells. And the measure does not live inside the table. You will call call that to come inside your table. And it's as I said, it's good to use with aggregation functions like the sum, average, max, and so on. And we'll see more examples about that. Now, when you hear DAX, DAX functions, you will think about, okay, some weird functions. Actually, no. Most of the functions are similar to Excel. 
So I'm going to show you right now where are the DAX functions that they are similar to Excel in this table. And for example, the operation, the operational functions or the math functions. So you see that there is some average, max, min, count, and count A, similar to Excel. What's new is count rows and distinct count. In the logical function, we see the F, F error, and OR, similar to Excel. But additional to that, there is something called switch. This is addition inside the DAX. The text functions are the same when you want to extract, cut from the left, from the mid, from the right, changing the, the format of the text to put it or capitalize, uh, to substitute, to trim, to concatenate text, add them together, similar to Excel. But what is completely new are the filter functions, which is the calculate, filter, all, related, and related table. But then the date functions, which is equal day to bring the day number, equal month to bring the month number from a date. And these are similar to Excel. So let's dive into Excel to see, first of all, how we can add the Power Query, Power Pivot to the Excel. And second of all, we will give hands on how to create calculated columns, how to create also measures using DAX. So I'm going right now to switch to Excel. And from here, I wanted to show you what do I mean there is no more A1 style. When we're going to use DAX, DAX is not going to be something like showing us, for example, if you have budget minus actual to calculate what is the variance, I want to calculate the variance, which is the budget minus the actual to know, you will do equal and you will select this cell. So it's a D2 minus C2. While in DAX, this is no longer over there. You won't see A2 minus C2 and so on, or D2 minus C2. Actually, we'll see a name of a column called budget minus a column called actual. So things will be done row by row. And let's go and take an example of that using this file, which I prepared called DAX. Now, in this file, what I have done is that I have used the get data from here, get data, and I brought four Excel files, four Excel files. I store them in the data model of the Excel. Now, to be able to access that data model, we have to add something called Power Pivot. And Power Pivot, it's there in Excel. However, it's not enabled. We have to enable it as an add-on. So how we can enable these add-ons, we can enable it from the Excel menu options where we can add them over there. So what I do, I can click on file and then go to the excel options and from the options we need to look at the add-ins and we look at excel add-ons and let's go over here let's see the excel add-on sorry yeah, the com add-ons add-on and we'll add these one which is called the power pivot now when i click power pivot and i add it you will see the power pivot comes over here and one of the things we have we have something called data model so why am I using data model? You'll tell me, Tom, what's the point of using data model? I'll tell you. Excel has a limitation of rows and columns. Maximum, we have 1,048,576 rows. If you go to the end, this is the number. What if I'm going to deal with the data that's above 1 million and for, 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 if you're talking about 1,048,576 rows, what if you have 1 million and a half, 2 million and a half data, and you want to bring it to Excel? And here where it comes this in handy, where I can go to the option where I need to get the data from an Excel file, and I will connect to that Excel file. file so what because there is not enough rows i needed to keep at the back engine in the data model and after that i will use the power query or the power pivot so i can do reporting on this data so here is what i can do i can tell to excel bring that file and when you bring it add it to the data model we'll see that option when i'm going to load to this data i'll click add to the data model and connect with it only don't download 
the information. So I did that by loading these four files. You can see them here. Let me delete this because it's repetitive. I'm going to delete it. And here, where we're going to focus on building the relationship between these data. So if I go to Power Pivot, I look at the data model, I will see that I have one table. Here is the second table, third table, and fourth table. And if I want to check in the model diagram view, I can see that here are my four tables, and these are the columns of each table. So now, in this exercise here, we would like to build the relationship between these tables. But where is the relationship? And here we're going to use, first of all, DAX to separate the account number that holds the code for each one of them. So it'll tell me, what does that mean? I'll tell you. Let me go to the data view over here, and let me go to the transaction table. So in the transaction table, we have an account number that comp comp uh, comprise of three sections. Our section, 1202, two, then 58300, then here 109. So 1202, two, if I go to the department table, I will see that 1202 two refers to a department called communication. Great. And then when I look at the 58300 code over here, if I go to the expense table, go to the end, this is for the miscellaneous expense. And then when I go to the transaction, the last one, which is the code 109, this 109 represents the city 109, which is Sharjah. So now I need to work with my DAX function over here to create separation. So therefore, I'm going to use three functions, which is equals left, equals mid, equals right. Three functions, starting by the first one. So the 1202 is the department code. Therefore, I come to that column when I'm adding column. Remember, I said to you that we will use the DAX to add in columns and we'll use to create measures. And we'll see the measures later. So we'll start with adding the first column over here, which is the department code. I'm going to write here department code as the name of the column. And when I click inside right now, I need to do the following. I need to write left function where I make equals left. And then I can select this cell. And you will see it's not showing me a cell A1 or A2. It is showing me the name of the table which is transactions table and the column called account. And then I'm gonna take the force, four characters, the first four characters starting from the left of the cell. So I'll wait and here is my department code. expense code and now i will look at the function which is equals to the mid and here equals mid i'm going to select again the account and you see if even if i select here doesn't matter regardless where i select there is no more grid style a a cell a1 a2 regardless it's going to prompt the column name the qualified name which is the table name with the column name and from the mid, starting from the sixth position, because I have one, two, three, four, the fifth positions, position here is holding the dash. I want to exclude it. So I'm going to start from the sixth position. And from there, I'm going to need to take five characters. And now I will come up with the expense code. And now there, after that, I'm going to do the last thing, which is the city code, city code, and the city code, I'm going to use the right. The right Y, because I want to start from the right of the cell or here, the column, taking the last three, starting from one, two, three, right, and go to the left. So here I'm going to use the function, which is equals to right. And I'm going to select that, then define three characters here and hit enter. So now I created a good example of columns. 
Remember I said that there are bad example of columns. The bad example of columns, for example, this actual column, if I wanted to have the total, what is the total of all this actual? So if I go here and I make the following, if I wanted to say total transactions or total actual, total actual, where I say the following, I do equal sum of the actual, I'm gonna type the actual and I hit enter. And you will see here a very bad example. It took the total of this, adding all this column and repeating this at every column, which is a big no. Rather than that, what we can do, we can do something called measure, creating a measure. A measure can hold only this number. The measure name is called total actual and it holds only that total number. So I'm gonna delete this column. And then later on, we'll move to measures. But before moving to measures, I would like to create, first of all, the relationship. Now that I have here this code and this code and this code, I can link them to the other table so I can get more information. And what do I mean by that? If I go and create here a pivot table, I'm going to create, for example, that pivot table. And let's go with that pivot table, put it to the almost to the top, not to the end. Let's have it over here click OK and click OK. Now what we have that we have here, these tables, but I cannot query between them. So if I wanted to display the actual expenses by all the departments, and here we'll see that there is no relationship detected. That's wrong. So therefore I wanted to go and create that act active relationship. I'm gonna click on the managing the data model. Let's go to the diagram view. And here, what I can do, I can link this department code that I extracted from the account with this department code. So I created here a relationship. And again, from the expense code to the expense code. So I created the second relationship. And from the city code to that city code, and I created the third one. Now, when I go back to Excel and I say, give me the department name. And then after that, give me D actual itself transaction give me the actual now it's representing the correct number for each department how much was the total for each department so that's one thing now we will see that the actual here it was created because i drag it to the field over here but what if i need a field that hold only the total number over here it's okay it's gonna it's gonna calculate every time you use the filter but i wanted to do a measure that is only related to the total, total actual. So therefore I can create this measure from here directly using the measure. And here the measure, when I create on a new measure, it's asking me where you want to put the measure. You wanna put it in the transaction table and any other table. No, I'm gonna keep it in the transaction because this is going to show me total actual. And here, what is the function? we will use the very similar function of Excel. I'm gonna use equal sum. And from there, I'm going to add all the numbers under the column, which is the actual. Click on check formula. It shows no error. What is the format? I'm gonna have the format as a number, decimal places or without, or I can have a whole number. But here I'm gonna use the click on okay. And now we will see that there is a measure here. Look at it, it's showing FX. So that's a measure as a whole number over here related to the total actual. So going back to the presentation, we've seen that we use the left, mid, right, which is very common, and we use the sum. Likewise, you can use the average, equal average, and you can select the actual or, the, or you can select the budget and so on. Now, what I need to focus on, again, I'm gonna use some of the date function. I wanna extract some information. And I will show you how we can use the switch to calculate the quarter and what switch does. So now I'm going to do the following. I'm going to go back and to extract the, uh, to extract the date, the date from the date, the day number and the month number and the year number, I'm going to put them in columns. So I'm going to go back to my data model over here. Let me go to the data view and let's add to this table what is the month? I want to add the month. 
and here will be equals equal month as a function i will select the date close that hit enter and now it extract the month number second i would like to add the quarter so here's for the quarter i'm going to use a different function which is called switch and switch is a new a new that it's only in dax now the switch what it does as follows let's look into the switch how it works I'm going to expand this so we will tell you. So here we will need to use a switch and the condition it should be met as true. Switch true. So the condition, the expression should be true. So I will say the following. If the month and the month not as a function, as a column, remember, ha, huh, look at it. There is a function called month, but here the column name is month and it shows as a table icon. If the month is equal or smaller than three then this should be between quotation mark q1 and again the second condition if again i can copy even that to make it easier i can copy it and here say six then this is give us q2 and again here if it's smaller than or equal to nine this would be q3 Otherwise, should be Q4. Let's close this and let's right now try to see if this will work with us. I'm going to hit enter and wait and we'll see. If there is any wrong with the expressions, I'll, I, we have to see sometimes it gives us that, yes, you have an issue somewhere over here. So let's maybe review what, what, could, what could be an issue over here. So I use the first expression, which is that the month is should be greater than equal. That's the mistake that I've done. You use the greater or smaller sign, then use the equal, that's why. And I'll hit enter right now, and I'll wait that to calculate. So that's why I showed you that sometimes you have to do mistake. I did these mistakes just to, so, to, to tell you that. Make sure that this will always give you an issue and it was highlighting for me, where is the issue? So now we see that month nine, which is September, it's a Q3 month two february it's q4 and so q1 sorry and so on unless after that i need to at last add the year and i use a regular year function lies in excel so equals year and now i'm going to select that and i'm adding the year so that's one way of using switch function so i switch a value to a specific value so this is about switch function now let's look at counting rows and distinct count. So counting rows, it will count generally how many rows inside a specific table or something. So if I wanted to create count row, if I count row here, what will happen? It will be a bad example. It will repeat the row count on every single one. Let's try it here directly if I, if I write equal count row, count row, rows, and I'll select the table, which is transaction table. Hit enter, and you will see that there are 7,733 7, 7, rows. It's repeated on each, every one of them. So this is wrong. What we need to do is to use it as a measure. I can use it as a measure. Remember that I said to you, this is a bad example because I need a one figure number. So I'm gonna delete that column and let's go and create it as a measure you can create that as a measure from here again we'll go back to the excel i click the data model here and look at the new sorry not the data model the measure and this i can call it total total transactions and here i will count each row represent one transaction so here i'll do count rows and i'll use the table which is transactions transactions and close, let me check my formula. It's all okay, should be a number, should not be decimal, should be a whole number. Use thousand separator and I can click on okay. And now I have the total number of transactions. So that's another way of, uh, that's one way to use the count rows. So now I'm gonna open uh, a chance for any questions so far. Any questions? Anyone has a question? 
he or she can write. All right, since there are no questions right now, we will move forward and let's look at distinct count. So distinct count, it distinctly count specific things. For example, if I am looking at the transaction table, or let's look at another table, not the transaction, I'm gonna to go to the data model, and I wanted to know how many times the departments are repeated here. So it will show me that you have distinct number. For, for example, here in this table, we have in this table, for example, the department code. What if I wanted the department name to be represented inside this table? For example, I don't want the, I, I need the department code, but if I wanted to have this translated into the department name, I will use one of the functions called related. This is called related. Let me show you the example right now. If I need here the department name inside this table, I will use the function which is called related. Click over here inside it and then use related. And the related is asking me to pull a column name from which table. So I'm gonna go to the table called department and I'm gonna see here, the table name department and I'm gonna pull the column called department name. And that's it, close and hit enter. And now this will be translated. Why it is translated? Because now there is a relation between them. If there was no relation by the department code is linked with the department code related function won't work. That's for sure. So now I pulled the department name. So now if I wanted to make a distinct count, how many departments over here or how many product, but without repetition, because here you will see communication is repeated here. You will see it repeated. There are many transactions. So I wanted to know how many departments there I can use something called distinct count. And the distinct count will do for me the job. I can write it as a measure over here. I can use this here and I make equal distinct, distinct count. And I wanted to count from my transaction table, the column, which is called department name, the transaction table, department name, the one I just added right now. And I hit enter and we'll wait for that to calculate. We'll see that we have 25 departments inside. Note that when I wrote it there below the table, it created it as a measure. But when you write it over here, it will add it as a column. So the measure name is measure one. I can hear here, I can say total number of departments and so on of departments. So that's the name of my new measure. That's the second use of the distinct count. That's the use of the distinct count and the counting rows. And now let's look at the functions that they are not similar to Excel, like the calculate, like the filter, like the related. Uh, related, we saw it right now, but let's also see what related table does. So I'm gonna start with the calculate and the calculate, it will do for me a calculation based on a filter criteria. So now I'm moving back to my file over here and let's look at the Excel again. Now I'm going to display by city. I'm going to display by city. And you see, because we have this total transaction where we do a distinct count, it showed me, so, sorry, when it does a count, it counts for me the rows. It counts how many times Abu Dhabi appeared in my table. And this will mean that there were 718 transactions happened for the city of Abu Dhabi and so on. Now I'm going to remove that measure and we'll use something called calculate. If I put right now the total transaction, let me show you that the total transaction, I need the value of it. Here is the total actual, actual actually, the total actual, and we'll see the actual per city. How much Abu Dhabi spent, how much I spent, the MAM, Jubail, Jeddah, and so forth. What if I wanted to see the city of Riyadh alone? I want a measure for it, like a measure to give this number alone, this number alone. So what I can do, I can create a measure called calculate. And this is good 
what if I wanted to divide this over the total and know exactly, know exactly what is the ratio for the Riyadh? So therefore, I'm going to create a measure only for Riyadh. And then after that, I will divide it over the total transaction. I will have the ratio, how much as a percentages Riyadh spent from the total expense. So I will start with the measure, create a measure. Well, I will call it here actual expense Riyadh and now I'll go over here and I will use calculate now the calculate is telling for me which expression you would like to use we would like to use the total total actual because this is an aggregated measure this is a calculation and now it's telling me what is your filter criteria my filter criteria that the city from the table city, the city name must be equal to Riyadh. I will close. Now close that. Let's check the formula. And the formula is OK. I need this to be as a number with no decimals. And click on OK. And there you go. We have right now for the city of Riyadh. Now notice that this is regardless of what other cities appearing over here, it will only calculate for Riyadh, 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 Riyadh only. And we will explain right now how can I show only Riyadh alone without to exclude the other, the other cities. But the point is in my calculation right now is that I can create different, let me take out the total actual from here. And I wanted right now to filter by the city of Riyadh. So this is what it's going to do for me. It's going to help me to make a filter for Riyadh city that I can select only Riyadh. But what I wanted to do is the following. I wanted right now to create a new measure. I will call it percentage actual of Riyadh. And now I will use the following, which is the actual, actual for Riyadh city divided over the total actual and now this should be as number, as percentage, and that's it with no, or we can have one or two. And I click on OK, and there you go. I have right now the calculation for Riyadh. So coming back to calculate right now, you tell me, OK, calculate was very good, but how can I avoid what we have seen before, which is when we added the city and I added the total, total transactions, uh, sorry, the total actual, and then when we added expense for Riyadh, I need this is the sorry actual expense for Riyadh. How can I fix this one? So here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to add one additional thing. It's calling filtering, filtering to the calculate, and we'll see that by going to the measures. Let me edit this measure for the actual expense by Riyadh. Edit that measure. The measure over here, I'm going to expand. After this expression, instead of writing this filter, I'm going to first add filter function. And in this filter function, I used to select, I need to select the table, which is the table called city. And the column would be here. City country must be equal to Riyadh. And I need to close the bracket for the filter. Close the bracket for the calculate function. Now let's calculate it again. And this will be right now different. Now I'm going to close. And now we'll see that we have only the number for Riyadh. And this has been excluded. So that's the use of the filter. Can be very useful and handy when we use things for, for a specific filter measure. One additional also very common used is called all and all what it does it removes everything and gives the total number regardless of what's happened like for example here this total number is broken down into each city because this is filtered by city or let's say segregated by city because i added city as a dimension if i don't want this kind of aggregation i can have a whole fixed number which is that total I can write a new measure where I will say total, total actual 
expenses. And here I will use the calculate, where I need to calculate the total transaction. But here I will add to it a function called all. And the all, what it does, I say in this table, I'm using the cities. Here, I'm going to select the city as a table, or I can select city column. Close that one, and let's check our formula. And now saying the expression is not valid or, or, or appears to be incomplete. And here is telling me that the issue that I'm having here, it should be in one of the functions. It's either the all or the calculate. Is it because we did not close one more bracket? Let's do that again. Yes, you see that one. Here, it's showing that issue, and it's telling us that there is the end of the input was reached. No, there is a bracket for the all function. It's closed over here. There is for the calculate function, I have to close over here. So we close that, we'll check the formula. All is okay. We'll have it as a number, thousand separator, and I click okay. And let's see what happened right now. Now what happened that the total here for cities is repeated, regardless of what city. All is telling to me, I'm going to ignore, and I'm going to give you only this total regardless. So this measure could be, could be useful to use if you want this number always, always to appear, regardless of what city, to do, for example, a division. I want to divide this over this, or I want to divide this over this, or I want to divide this over this. You can do it. So this is what will happen in this case. You will use all to remove any filter within the pivot table or segregation within the pivot table. So that's for the DAX function all. So, so far right now, we have covered these new ones, which are not in Excel, but they are in DAX. We covered the switch, count rows, distinct count, calculate, filter, and all related. We left right now with the last one, which is called related table. And we're going to take a simple example of related table over here, which is I'm going to show right now. So if I'm having, let's say over here, the cities, or let's have different things. I'm going to have the total expense by departments. I'm going to have here departments. Let's select the department name. I can take the department name, which is in the transaction table over here. And I added that right now. And I wanted to look at this function, which is called, uh, let's go to, first of all, to the data model. And I wanted to add a column, which is called related table. Remember that when I use related over here, what I did, I pulled the department name from the department table based on the department code. Now, if I wanted to pull a city, the whole city table, by doing the following, I will do equal related table, sorry, let me just do that, equal related table. And over here, I'm going to use from the related table, I wanted to pull the table city. And now, as when I hit enter, what happens? This function gives an error. This, this will say the table city has three columns. I cannot fit them into one column. So therefore, this won't work unless you put it within another wrapping function. For example, I can add for that count rows inside this related function and I hit enter and what it does it's gonna count rows for each city so let me go right now to my pivot table and I show you if I'm going to pull that inside right now if I'm going to pull that inside and what's the name of that measure ah I did not name that measure it's called add column two let me go and fix that column name sorry so let me call it here count Transaction by city, transaction count by, or transaction count by city. So right now, I'm going to go back to my cell over here. I will go down and let's try to grab that one. And I put it over here. And it's telling me that the transactions happened in the accounting department happened from 361 transactions has happened based on the cities that we have. So here is the, the total number of transactions. 
Here is the total number of the transaction, not by city, sorry, that's by, by the accounting department. If I, remove, if I remove the accounting department from here, let's remove the department and I'll have the city instead, it's telling me, here are the number of transactions by cities. So this is by Abu Dhabi. Here are the number, number of transactions, Al Ain, Dammam, Dubai, Jeddah, and so on. So I created such a measure to hold it and where we're grabbing the information per city. So basically there are many, many other DAX functions that you can use. These are the mostly common in use and you can see more and more of them by going to DAX function guide by Microsoft. So here we have something DAX functions here. Uh, uh, all DAX, all DAX functions, all DAX functions. You will find them on the website by Microsoft. Here is the website. I can share it with you. And here you will see that all type of DAX functions. You can search and you can look at whatever you need to use from them. So this is for the DAX. This is the reference. This website is showing you a full reference. I'm going to share it in the chat, all of you, and you can look at them. So here is the good thing about Microsoft here. So if you want to use the filter functions, you want to use the all or calculate, it gives you how you should write it and gives you even an example of how you can do it. So you can copy it from here, paste it, and you can use, of course, another example, another examples and use it with another exercise files. So you can use these facts, that's function. It's so powerful to create, as I said, different measures, adding columns to your data that you bring it without making this column to be part of the actual source data. So to here, we have arrived to the Q and A session and almost to the end of our session. Would like to hear from you any questions. Any questions so far? Please write me in the, in the chat or Q&A. No questions so far? Any questions? Go back to the DAX functions again over here. Okay, and the DAX might be new to you, but the good thing that if you start learning the DAX, it's the also entry to the Power BI because Power BI is built on the Power Query engine and therefore you will find it very useful because not every time you have the liberty to change in the source and the source file things, you know? So therefore DAX, you can use it to analyze your data differently, creating additional columns that helps you. So this would be great if you practice on DAX first with the Power, Power Query in the Microsoft Excel, then you can later on find it easy for you to start practicing this exactly in the Power BI. So do I hear any question? Do you need to write me anything? It's the time to ask questions right now. I'm seeing everyone is okay. Type. That's a, that's fine. That's fine. I can end it end it up like. If there are no any questions, and uh, please make sure to fill the survey once we exit from this session. Then after that, you will be receiving a link again, and I will be sending also these files that I have used, so you can rewatch the webinar and practice as well with these files. Well, thank you so much. We can end the session over here if there are no any questions and feel free to leave.
as I said, that you will be receiving email with the certificate as well as the email with the recorded uh, session. You will be receiving it probably by Sunday with the link how to use these files. You'll have the, these files and also a copy of the presentation. Okay, so uh, thank you for attending today. I uh, hope it was informative and I look forward to seeing you on other webinars. I'm going to end the session now. Thank you, everyone.